So you'll understand what ETL is. Okay, ETL uh, stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. As the name suggests, uh, it will it is used for extracting data. Say like from OLTP, want to do any transformations? We can do transformations. Uh, like we want to. So when we are recording transactions, so say that I am running my stores, uh, different locations in US, in UK, and in Singapore. So while I uh, record transactions in Singapore, it will be in Singapore USD. And when I'm re recording transactions in Europe, it will be in Euros. UK, it will be in GBP, Pounds. US, US Dollars. But I have centralized database in India. And I am running that business from India. So I am an um, Indian businessman. So all the data I'll be analyzing here will be in rupees. Hi, if I'm running a business from US, I that all my uh, analysis will be in dollars. No, but I have in I, INR. So what I do when I load all this uh, transactional data into my central database, say it is in Bombay, uh, I will do conversi convers currency conversions into INR and store into my systems. Because at the end of the day, all my sales reports I want to see in INR how it is moving because my stocks are listed in NSC. Okay, so uh, this, uh, like con conversion conversions, transformations can be as simple as that or as complex as uh, sending a settlement file to a uh, bank. Your credit card transformation, credit card transaction should be sent to bank. So bank will have certain set of uh, rules and regulations. They accept only in one format. So you have to transform your data to match that format and post it to them. So that transformations are part of ETL. Extract, transform, and load. Load to where? Load into OLAP, Online Analytical Processing Database, our data model, multi-dimensional model, data warehouse. So we load data into data warehouse. So extract and extraction can happen from multiple systems. But loading will be into only one system. There can be multiple transformations or there can be no transformations. Transformation is optional. You can sometimes do only simple extract and load. It's not that always we do uh, ETL for, uh, from OLTP to OLAP. Sometimes within OLAP also we may implement ETL, moving data from one dimension to another dimension. Or moving data from, so that will never happen, moving data from one dimension to another dimension unless they are linked. Remember in Snowflake schema. And in OLTP also sometimes we implement ETL to move uh, lookup data, maybe publish region-wise targets. So ETL in general is used to create or migrate data from one database to another database, to create data mice or data, data marts or data warehouses. Data warehouse, the scope will be discussed in the upcoming slide in detail and transformations. So the different vendors that provide these ETL tools are like Informatica, which is very famous, a popular tool. Uh, then we have uh, huge tools like Abinitio, AB it is called as Abinitio. Abinitio, yeah, it is pronounced as Abinitio. Abinitio is uh, for huge volumes of data, very huge volumes of data, like, like uh, retail source like Walmart, Tesco will be using this. Then we have one from IBM, SSIS from Microsoft, Pentaho, which is an open source tool. So now I'll discuss ETL scope in a data warehouse building. How is ETL used in data warehouse building? Okay. So as I said, data can be coming from different sources. Uh, data coming from application, by application files like Excel, words or PPTs, I have data stored in different different forms. Then I have uh, system generated files like flat files, system generated files as in so you see uh, supermarkets there will be POS, point of sales installed or uh, kiosk machines, self operating automatic machines. So these machines will generate uh, flat files like XML files or text files with all the transaction history that will be posted to the central system, central server. 
our data can be coming from OLTP online analytical transaction processing like RDBMS our data can be coming from web services and ERP so all these uh, pointers all these uh, sources will be data points or entry points for ETL and ETL can be connected a single ETL can be connected to all these sources or each for each source so ETL will have a set of drivers to communicate different applications when it is communicating with Excel files it will have Excel drivers if it is communicating with uh, OLDB then it will have OLDB drivers like RDBMS drivers so ETL will have its own set of drivers pre-installed in it while communicating with different databases so when the communication uh, has successfully established all the security and parameters are satisfied then the data is retrieved which is extracted if any transformations are required like when I'm reading data from uh, online web service most of the data will be coming in JSON format or XML format so I uh, so that will have a lot many tags if I say XML there will be a lot many tags unnecessary tags written in data I have to eliminate all those uh, tags and only extract meaningful data so all the transformations will happen then will be loaded into one staging database one or multiple staging database so this staging database will be denormalized form in will be in denormalized form temporary tables which are created to support intermediate storage of data so here data will be stored for a instantaneous uh, point of time and then we will have more precise ETL running which will club all this data so now once the data reaches uh, once the data reaches our uh, staging area so uh, this will be application independent here we don't bother uh, whether the data is coming data came from files or uh, RDBMS or ERP systems it is all neutral now independent of application so now here I will be more focusing on aggregating the data and applying business transformations uh, on which platform this will be staging database it will be any RDBMS it will not be ERP it will not be applications it will be RDBMS can be Oracle can be SQL server can be Teradata tables are created to store data at the runtime then that is fetched to more precise ETL with more business logics and complex logics once that is done data is loaded into data warehouse or data marts so this is data warehouse so here will I'll have that uh, I'll have a data model created dimensional model created it will have uh, dimensions and facts so the data is loaded into dimensional model directly this is now my OLAP this is my OLAP this is OLTP OLTP is one of the entry point to OLAP data can come from other applications also We'll go to staging this is standard way data is created and then data is moved it will come to dimensional model so once the data is in dimensional model uh, I can go and create ad hoc requests or uh, implement dashboards do analytics do analytics so this entire process of ETL runs uh, 
either uh, once in a day or every one hour it is not instantaneous it doesn't run in the real time it doesn't run continuously uh, based on the hardware resources available uh, either some organizations uh, set this up on a hourly basis or daily basis some organizations even do weekly basis updations into data warehouse because of the hard hardware constraints so when we are going for data modeling OLAP then we need solid infrastructure in place good RAM hardware because a lot of IO operations okay. so this is a scope of ETL so ETL as a concept it is very simple uh, it is it's, it states that data data is extracted from different points uh, transformations are applied and loaded but when we have to do with the tool uh, it gets a little complex because of the uh, uh, data being in different uh, forms and applications but we have tools we have tools to address all that 